Are you a business owner stuck in fear, doubt, and worry about what the marketplace will look like in the future? Then this show is for you. Strap on your seatbelt and get ready to disrupt and innovate. Here's your host, Lisa Levy. Today, I have a very special guest joining us, somebody who truly embodies the spirit of disruption and innovation in the business world. Allow me to introduce Donnie Bovine, the founder of Success Champions, a networking platform that empowers B2B entrepreneurs with peer support and strategic guidance. This portion of Donnie's journey began on a pivotal day, March 17th, 2020. He was struck with inspiration. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and the postponement of his first ever badass business summit, he recognized the need to support and guide fellow business owners in building their online enterprises. Seven days later, he launched Success Champions Networking. Donnie set out to create a new paradigm that would truly make a difference in the lives of entrepreneurs. He envisioned a network where MLMs, network marketing, and direct marketing companies were not welcome. Instead, this membership is based on success and potential with a strong emphasis on training, education, and growth. Donnie's experience in sales, business development, and scaling companies over the past 25 years positions him as a respected authority in the field. He hosts his own podcast, Growth Mode Podcast, where he shares his insights and interviews interviews inspiring individuals who have achieved remarkable success. That was all easy for me to say, Donnie, welcome to the conversation. Lisa, I was so proud. You were like almost all the way through it. You almost had it. That was awesome. That was a great introduction, love. Thank you for that. Absolutely. I I, I, I feel like I'm somebody at the moment. So appreciate that. (laughs) Well, you are somebody to this audience and the insights that you're going to share, right? I I set you up and I'm glad that you got the feels out of that. But the audience really gets the impact of your story from Mm. you. Will you take us on the journey of where, how you got to where you are today? Yeah, for sure. So a little bit of background, you know, I did four years in the Marine Corps, 20 years, 25 years now as a sales guy. Um, I turned 40 before I even knew that I could do this thing called be an entrepreneur, start your own business. You know, just a blue collar kid, right? You go, you work, you get a job, you know, you retire. And so, but I turned 40, there was these guys like Gary Vee and Tim Ferriss and all these people like, be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur. It'll... And they made it sound so damn easy. And I thought at that point, I had 20 years of sales under my belt that surely I could launch a business and have no problem. So I launched my company. Within 24 hours of launching my company, I received a non-compete letter that I don't remember signing. So now here I was, the only thing I knew was sales. Supposedly I was pop one of the top sales trainers in the country. I don't know what that means other than I'm really good at flapping my gums in front of a room. But I launched the company, but now I couldn't talk about the only thing I knew, which was sales and uh, sales, sales management, business development. So I tried to build the company without talking about those things. And six months in and my wife's Jeep was repossessed um, and we almost lost our farm to foreclosure. Um, graciously, my wife cashed in her 401k, had already cashed in mine, and got her Jeep back and saved the farm. Um, from that moment to where I am now, I'm the CEO of Success Champion Networkings. I do have one of the top podcasts, five best selling books, and a partridge in a pear tree. But my biggest focus and mission in life is to help as many people as I possibly can find freedom through building a business, because I think building a business is the most best way, most best, that's a great phrase, is the best way to truly meet the person in the mirror. Because if you don't like that person, nobody else is going to. Absolutely. So starting a business and not being able to build a business that you know how to to build, right, is like the worst nightmare. And that, that NDA was served back to you incredibly quickly. I Right, that was, that that's a painful moment. But on that journey, you've had some wonderful moments where you have had great the, the the success moments. For sure. Will you share the story about that first huge milestone that was life changing for you and your family? Yeah. So after my wife had saved the farm, a friend of mine had reached out to me and said, Donnie, I'd, I'd love for you to come speak on my stage. And I instantly said, hey, man, I'm under a non-compete. I can't do that. The only thing I know how to speak about is sales. He goes, no, no, I just want you to come share your story. You've got a pretty cool story over 20 years in sales. So come share it. And, you know, at that point, I'd done a lot of training, but not like public speaking. Um, so I'd, I'd been in front of thousands and thousands of salespeople, but this was like my first real I'm standing on a stage in front of 400 people, right? So it was a whole different game for me. 
But, you know, I, I told my wife at that point, I'm like, look, I'm going to leave it all on the table. So I'm going to go out and give everything I have in this speech. And if it works, I'm going to stay in the game. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to corporate America and get a job. Now, if my wife was standing right here, she would tell you I'm full of crap because I would I'm I'm broken and, and completely unemployable at this point. You know, six and a half years almost here and building a business. But I went out, gave the speech, and afterwards, I didn't know after a speech that you should be like go out and shake hands and talk to people. I was freaking exhausted, right? It was mentally exhausting, physically exhausting. So I just went to the back and sat down in a chair. And people started coming back through the curtains to meet me. And I was like, so I'm standing up. And one of the guys who came through, he said, man, I loved your energy. I love your passion. Would you come tell your story on my podcast? And now this was May of 2018. And I said, what the hell is a podcast? <laughs> and he said, it's like a morning talk show. Where we'll interview you. And I said, oh, that'd be fun. So I drive out to Dallas about an hour away from where I lived. And we were in a full studio. We did the podcast interview. And as soon as the interview aired, like two days later, one of his listeners reached out and became a client of mine. And I went, wait, there's something to this podcasting thing. So it wasn't long after that. It was May of 2018 when I launched my first podcast. And podcasting truly saved my business. Um, luckily, the show took off very well. Um, we had tons of listeners coming in. And we had a lot of people reaching out to be guests on the show. And they were well-known names. And I knew I couldn't have a crap process about building a podcast. So I had to learn what are the systems? What are the operations? How do I hire people? How do I bring people in? And in building that show, I learned the basics of building a fundamental business. And that's what ultimately allowed me to launch a you know, podcast production company that we quickly took to six figures because we weren't doing outside the you know podcast. We were doing internal podcasts for companies. Uh, and then, you know, in September of 2018, the non-compete came up. So we were able to then go launch a sales training company, which also took off to six figures. So it was a couple of very, very cool pivotal things that happened because I just decided to bet on me and keep going through the motions. And isn't that right in the entrepreneurial journey and, you know, parts of the story that you've shared, there's that moment of there are those out there who market it and make it sound like it's a sexy, easy thing. <laughs> Everybody should do it. Everybody can do it. And if you send me $9.99, yeah, I'll sure. make sure that you get there and, you know, it, right, whatever. It's hard, hard work. Well, and that's a hard, 100% the reason that I tell everybody about my wife's Jeep being repossessed and almost losing a farm. You know, I I, I want to put that up there. And I don't tell the story in an attempt to sound braggarty, like I've accomplished all these cool things. I've done some cool things. Don't get me wrong. But it, I really want people to understand that I understand the crap show of building a business because it is damn hard. And now I can hear all these freaking woo-woo people at me like, yeah, he's the hustle and grind guy. No, no, no. I'm not the hustle and grind guy. Right. But it is literally hard to build a business. It is not easy for most of us were corporate escapees. Like we worked in corporate for a long time. Now we're out building a business. That's a massive mental leap to go. I'm going to spend my entire life working for somebody else. Now I have nobody telling me what to do and I got to figure all this crap out on my own. And there's so much information, so many gurus out there. I mean, I can't tell you how many stupid courses I bought, workshops and seminars I went trying to figure out how to build a business because everybody sounded like they had the secret formula and they made it sound so easy. But here's the honest to God truth. The easy way is the hard way. Every time you try and make business easy and simple, you're costing yourself a lot longer process because there is no shortcuts. There's no silver bullets. It's literally blocking and tackling, doing the basics. You need to learn to sell. You need to be able to figure out how to find people to sell to. You need to sell them that stuff. You need to deliver on that stuff. You need to upsell them again on something else. And you need to keep moving through that process. That's business. And if you can't wrap your head around the fundamentals that allow you to figure out the accounting, the financing, the operations and all that stuff, right? but it's basic fundamentals. There's no funnel. There's no automation. There's no thing that's going to magically build your business. You've got to go do the work to build your business. Right. And underneath all of that, right, you have to be credible in what you're delivering. You have to honor the commitments that you make. And there aren't bells and whistles that make any of that easier, right? So no. if it's not, if you are not driving value and impact to your client or your customer with your product or service, 
it's not going to sustain. And after a number of years in the entrepreneurial space, you said it earlier, we become unemployable. Yeah. 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 I, I'm 14 years in. I am beyond unemployable by a corporation. I, I would mean, be can fired. you imagine going working for somebody else? Yeah, knowing what you know now? Yeah. No way. No, no. Right. It would be for me, it would be an experiment in how long does it take to get fired? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be purely for my entertainment value because yes, no, there's just, there's no way that that would ever work again. For sure. For sure. With the, with what you're building, what really are you trying to influence in the business world? What, what is that impact that you're looking to make that disruption that you're causing? Yeah, for sure. You know, what was fascinating is when we launched Success Champion Networking, I truly had no desire to, to launch networking groups. It was a, a happenstance, you know, that we literally had to postpone the Badass Business Summit because of COVID. And prior to launching the company, you know, I because I was always in the B2B sales space, um, except for my first career in sales, but mainly B2B almost the entire run. And traditional networking didn't work for me. Like and 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 I love the chambers of commerce. I love BNIs. I love those organizations. There's a place for them, but I was selling commercial printing, and when I worked for other people and in selling commercial printing, my average job was twenty thousand, fifty thousand. I had jobs upwards of a quarter of a million dollars, and God love the people in the chambers and things, and God love the people in the BNIs and stuff. But they're not dealing with people that are capable of making purchases of that size and that volume. So I had to find ways to get around the B2C side of things, the business to consumer. So I started creating my own networking groups. And then the chamber found out what I was doing and asked me to come launch a group. So I launched 11 groups for the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce and built them out. And by the time I launched my company, I was just burnt out on the idea of networking and networking groups. And I really wanted to be the sales trainer. I mean, that was the goal that I was going to do. I was just going to reinvent what I always done. And so... When COVID was going, we had the online pod, we had the podcasting company going, we had the sales training company, and we we're both doing very, very well, multiple six figures in both. And then the pandemic hits. And, you know, it took me two and a half years to build a legit online business. You know, so I want people to understand it's a freaking journey to get this done. And I knew how hard it was, and, but the whole world was moving online and they didn't have two and a half years to figure out how to do the online thing. You know, they had 30 days if they were lucky. So I jokingly tell everybody, I felt like Liam Neeson at that point. I had a skill set and I knew how to use it. So I decided to launch the, the virtual networking groups because I knew that I had a talent and skill for building those groups, but I also knew that I could impact a lot of lives in that moment. So we launched the groups like I'd always had, and they were kind of like your traditional networking groups, if you will. And then as I got into it, I realized that there was a massive gap in the marketplace that nobody was truly capitalizing on. This is when we decided to literally try and disrupt the entire industry. And we went straight after the B2B game. We started eliminating the B2C folks and nothing against the realtors, the title, the mortgage folks, all them, God love them. It just is, it's always a one-sided situation. The B2B folk can set them up all day long, but they can't reciprocate. So their burnout happens really, really, really quickly. So we came in and we said, okay, traditional networking, how it's been done hasn't been upgraded since the 80s. Let's upgrade it. So we came in and we brought in five different styles of meetings. We brought in a ton of training and education because of my sales background, sales training. But then we found that the number one thing that most B2B salespeople, most B2B business owners, your medium, small business owners are missing is they're missing that corporate environment that they left, right? So we all left corporate America. We're now out solopreneuring it, building our team, building our people. We don't have that sense of community and sense of belonging that we had when we worked in those environments. So we started embracing that more and the groups became like these little collective families for each one of our members. And they really started doing some amazing things. And as we evolved, we're like, man, let's really get involved in the communities. And we started, you know, we gave a free seat to any nonprofit in any one of our chapters so we could get more community involved. Like one chapter, we have a nonprofit called Baseball Face that sends new baseball equipment and stuff over to Ghana and third world countries to help these kids learn sport and, and all kinds of stuff. And they're partnered up with former MLB guys and stuff. So it's led to some really cool conversations. But the whole point was 
how do we create a B2B environment that allows that a corporate escapee, you know, that's got out, figured out their business, now they're trying to scale it, grow it. How do we get them in that environment that they left outside of corporate America so so that they can still accomplish it? It's like, you know, we don't hit, get holiday parties anymore when we're out, you know, building our companies. How do we create a world where they can create their own holiday parties and bring like that type of stuff together? Well, and the other really important piece of this in 2009, when I escaped corporate and started my own thing, the response to that was you are now gone into competition with everybody that you've ever known or worked with. Mm. And I was like, that is so incredibly stupid and short-sighted. One billion percent. Right. Absolutely. But that was truly what everybody told me. And this is going to be awful. You're going to, you know, write all of the naysayers, all of that awful stuff. And it took until the pandemic for business to business, solopreneurs, consultants, coaches, whatever you want, however you want to start grouping us to actually start collaborating together, mm -hmm. to find the sense of community that you're yep. talking about, because we can collaborate and, and in partnership, bring more to potential clients than any one of us can individually. Obviously, there are some direct competition issues right there out there, right? I have competitors, but in these partnership ideas, in these, this space that you're creating on purpose with intention is creating um, a groundswell that has been like more than a decade coming. 100% agree. You know, it was so, so what we've found, and uh, I love the whole idea of competition. I'm a no competition guy, right? You know, me and another salesperson can be sitting in the same room pitching the same person, right? One of us is going to get the deal. One of us is not, right? We can go to the next room, be pitching the same person, both of us. One of us is going to get the deal. One of us is not. It all comes down to the relationships you form with people, right? Uh, I tell everybody my brother's a handyman, okay? I don't care how many handymen I meet in my life. You're never going to get my business because blood's going to be a lot thicker. My brother's always going to get the business. It doesn't matter if you're a part of a group, part of whatever. You know, I'm not going to give you my handyman business. Really that simple. But interesting, some of our biggest referral partners, like people that bring people our way, run networking communities, right? They 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 understand the power of a community. And so we have several that we've partnered up with that we send our people to. They send their people to us because there's so much business to go around. You know, why would any one person say, no, 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 I can't work with you. I can't talk with you. You're just competition. That's somebody who's broke as hell hasn't figured out life and is worried that the one person that's their prospect, somebody's going to come along and take it. Well, if you're good at what you do, you have a plethora of people knocking on your door saying, Hey, I'd love to talk to you about business. One competition's never going to matter. So it's been a huge environment for us. Absolutely. But it is a huge mindset paradigm shift over time because- Agreed. Right there, there, when I started, it was so just mind boggling. The thought of sitting in a room with another group of people who do something that was similar enough to me that it would be perceived as competition. I never had a challenge with that. I was like, I, I you know, I'm going to win business or I'm not. It's pretty straightforward. And seeing the change over the last four years is absolutely inspiring for me and to actually see right you building communities of people together this way entrepreneurs in our country make up 95 percent of all businesses mm -hmm. the fortune 500 while they represent billions of dollars in revenue are less than five percent of the actual overall businesses yep. so right this feeding and caring for entrepreneurs is what drives our economy and actually having the ability to do this in partnership with others is something that we have been missing. That sense of the holiday party, the water cooler conversation, coffee break, whatever it is that you want to call that, right? We are human beings. And if we are in the solopreneur or that starting space where there's only a handful of us, but it's our business and our employees, we need a place to go to have a conversation and say, I'm scared, this isn't working this, you know, right. And, and have those really honest conversations because the voices in our head are always going to be the most critical and to have a community around us that can say, you know what, I've been there and yeah. here are some things you might want to try or in the, in with what you're doing, you're actually building in education because sales 
from my perspective, sales business development is always the hardest part, right? I'm an operator. Yep. I am not and was not ever trained in sales. So, right, I've learned to do it as a hack. And I will say on one hand, right, I'm not really very good at it. But I've been in business for 14 years, so I must be doing something okay. <laughs> There's this weird balancing act and all of that. As you're looking at what you've built and where you're at today, look to the future. What, where is this going and what does this mean for the communities that you're impacting? Yeah, well, I'm going to answer that, but I want to back up on one yep. thing that you said. You were talking about, you know, the water cooler talk and, and, and you know, people, they come up with business issues and I don't know where to go. Um, add on top of that, uh, you need that environment for sure. But add on top of that, think about you're out running your business. Life still happens as you're running a business. You know, like right now, I literally have a baby goat downstairs in my house because we had 13 babies. So my wife knows I'm on a podcast, so she's keeping the goat quiet because otherwise you might hear it bouncing around and all kinds of stuff, right? So I don't know if think you've ever had somebody on your podcast say you've had a goat on, you know, in the house, but we do. And so, you know, you also need that environment to win as life is happening. If you're a solopreneur and you're an island, like you're not talking to people and something tragic happens in your life and you don't have that sounding board, you don't have that support system, right? It, you're going to get dark really quick and it's going to affect the hell out of your business, right? So not only do you need the business advice, you need almost like that business family atmosphere where they may not be able to put their arm around you when times get tough, but they can virtually embrace the hell out of you to give you that kind of environment, you know, which I think is just as important as getting, you know, the the advice and support and the likes. This is why we call them, you know, being part of the family, because we really look at our groups as each one of them creates this family-like environment that you do when you work inside of corporations. You know, I guess you spend more time with your work people than you do your family a lot of times. And it's even worse in the entrepreneur game because you look, you're the guy who unlocks the door, takes out the trash, mops the floor, serves the company, you know, you do everything, right? So where I, th I think this is going is we are effectively changing how the B2B world networks. And I think we've put a huge dent into it so far. We're more and more places that I show up, uh, Success Champions Networking's name is popping up more and more and more, especially in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. You know, we'll go to an after hours event and show up and, you know, half the room is Success Champion, you know, networking members. So that's getting really, really fun. Uh, you're going to see a lot more big exposure as we start running some larger PR campaigns because, you know, SEN, as we call it, you know, Success Champion Networking, we're something you have to experience. People are have been so burnt out on networking. Because, um, like, if you're a B2B person and you've been out networking, you've gone to all these rooms that are filled with the real estate and the MLMers and, and all of this, and that just gets daunting because it's you giving and never getting anything out of it, right? And you're like, I'm opening up all these doors for people and nothing's happening here. It's because they don't know how to reciprocate. And if they do, they don't have that level of people to talk to. So a lot of this coming in the 24 for us is a huge awareness campaign. How do we get more and more people to experience our world? And the fact that we can do it virtually means you can be anywhere in the world and visit and join our groups and, and help grow your business. So we're throughout North America. We have chapters in Canada as well. So we're going to continue to stay North America focused this year. Um, and then going to 25, really work on start going more internationally with things. But really, uh, the focus and goal is to continue to create that environment to where that person's either networking in the B2B game. They're like, damn it, there's got to be something better out there. There's got to be something that actually going to work for me. Or they did the networking thing and they got burned out on it. And now they're out trying to be a salesperson and get their teeth kicked in over and over again because to be honest, sales sucks. And that's coming from a guy who's been in the sales game for 25 years. Right. It's no way around it. Sales sucks. You know, you got to play a long game. Kudos to your 14 years. And I'll say the fact that you've held on that long through a lot of the crap years is the reason you're still successful. Because I truly believe that the only people who find success are those of us that were too crazy to throw in the towel. Because if anybody knew what it really took to build a damn business, they wouldn't have signed up in the first damn place. Oh, yeah. And, you know, for me, right. 
it was an act of absolute, I, I had an adult temper tantrum, right? I just, I, I had it. I, I stormed out, right? It was, you know, no planning, no, no planning, no plan, no safety net. Okay, what's next? And not, not the course of action I recommend to any sane human being. So it was both <laughs> crazy and stupid. And that's stupid, S-T-O-O-O-O-P-I-D, <laughs> stupid. Um but not the path I recommend. Donnie, thank you so much for sharing your insights and the, the the view for the future and what the difference that you're making in the B2B space, because it is really hard and it is lonely out there for the entrepreneurs who are or who play in that in that in that space. For our audience, how do they find out more about you? How do they find out more about the network? For sure. Before we get to that, let me do something for you. So guys, if you've hung out with this uh, and you've gotten any value out of this, any tips, tricks, something that helps you in your business, do Lisa a favor. Take a screenshot wherever you're listening or watching this and share this out on social media. Tag me in it. Tag Lisa in it. If I see it, I will come comment, engage, and help give you some love back. But if you will share this stuff out for her, it helps her understand that this is the type of content that she needs to continue to promote and continue to bring you. And it's literally like you're giving her a virtual hug. And you guys know how hard it is to build a business and build an audience. That's the greatest gift you can give her. If you guys want to find out more about our world, just go to successchampionnetworking.com. You can go visit one of the groups for free and check it out and see if it fits in your world. Or you can follow me wherever you want to on social media. It's just Donnie Bovine all over social media. So D-O-N-N-I-E, B as in boy, O-I, V as in Victor, I-N as in NATO, Anywhere on social media, come hang out. Tell me you heard me on Lisa's show. So I make sure I accept the connection request if it comes through and chat and interact with you. But go share this out for her. That mean way more to me. You go share her show than to follow me. Donnie, thank you so much for that. For everybody who's listening, right? All of those links and everything will be in the show notes. So it's easy enough for you to find Donnie and 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 the and the network. For all of you who join us on a regular basis, you know the rules. Don't get left behind. Join me next time. That's it for today's episode of Disrupt and Innovate. Head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Every single week, one lucky listener that posts a review on iTunes will win the grand prize drawing, a $15,000 private VIP day with Lisa Levy. And be sure to head over to disruptandinnovate.com and get your free copy of Lisa's gift and join us on our next episode.